Majority population, though, is always saying, well, why don't these damn immigrants just integrate? Why don't they learn the language? Why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? Right? There's a lot of intolerance for immigrants, particularly in today's society, basically saying, well, you know, my ancestors came, you know, and they integrated, and, you know, they worked hard, and they got ahead, and these people come, and they don't want to speak the language, they just want to, you know, so on and so forth. Everyone, every generation has always said that. The reality is very different. The reality is, is that my mother-in-law, God bless her soul, 86, 87 years old, came from Cuba 50 years ago, still doesn't speak English, okay? You know, it's, she came as a 25, 26-year-old woman who had to work. That's what she had to do. She barely speaks English you know, after 50 years in the United States. The people who really, really do the hard work of integration are the children of immigrants. They're the ones for whom it's natural, it comes naturally, okay? For the reasons that we've been, you've been exposed to now. They don't they have to work normal. normal. They, they speak. speak. Yeah, like I had one of the students in one of the ESOL classes. She had three sons that were born in the United States, and they were all like very fluent in English. Mm -hmm. they, they were like a 10, 13, 15 years old. They knew English a lot better than their mom, but right. they were born that. But the thing about that then is that you get into, and I'm sure you've experienced this, right? You get into this where the children now have an inverted relationship with their parents, right? The children are the cultural experts. They can speak the language. So respect comes from the parents being able to provide and to reinforce that order. But in the, cir in the circumstance where the parent is um, less powerful because the child knows that, the, that, that being able to speak English and being able to negotiate the larger society, um, the child can do it better than the parent, that inverts this power relationship and creates a certain kind of stress and generational tension right? that has existed and exists over, you know, it's always existed whenever you get into these kinds of circumstances, but nonetheless, it's, it's problematic, okay? And so, I and mean, we have to take that into account when you're dealing with immigrants and, and these multiple relations, I mean, these multiple generations living together. And it can make a parent feel very belittled, right? I remember when I was learning Spanish, I, I immersed myself in, in life in, in Colombia, and I used to look at these two and three year olds, and they were chattering away in Spanish, and I'm like, why can't I do this? Why am I so dumb? You know? I'm an intelligent human being. I got into a good college, and yet I can't speak like they can speak. You know, just in, but now we know why, and hopefully that will make a difference um, as to you know helping explain all of this. Um, I hope will open up opportunities to have a dialogue. You know, parents and their children can have dialogue. You and your, you know, the research that you're doing can have a dialogue.